Hey, welcome back to Revamped Outdoors. Are you broke like me? Do you have no money? Do you always buy really old pieces of machinery? If that's true, you probably can't find any parts because they're discontinued or out of stock everywhere. And if that's the case, you might want to stick around because today we make a gasket that you can't just go down to Napa and pick up. So, uh, recently bought an ATC 200 ES from 1984. This is a three-wheeler. If you're unfamiliar with three-wheelers, uh, you can go see that video again. I use it primarily as an ice fishing rig. Uh, I use it to get around the lakes when they've frozen. Uh, but this year it seems like uh, they don't want to be frozen. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to see what happens. But uh, hopefully they, they freeze up pretty tight. But uh, the brakes were seized when I bought this on the rear brakes were seized up. I don't know if some water got in there or something, but all the brake pads were just completely shot and the brakes wouldn't move at all. Even the front lever or the foot pedal, they were just seized into the hub. So what I ended up doing is uh, taking the hub apart, getting some new brake shoes uh, because it is a drum setup. So I got some new shoes, put those in there, um, but need a gasket for that and you can use some of that permatex gasket maker where you kind of lay it out and set it in there finger tight let it set up and then push it on all the way but i wanted something that was a little bit more permanent something like the original stock gaskets so i decided i i have a cricket maker so why couldn't we just you know model it up in fusion 360 and let it rip so that's what I ended up doing. I went into Fusion 360. First, basically what I did was I took the side cover off where uh, the gasket was going to be. So then I took, to the best of my ability, a photo with my camera on my cell phone. I made that as best as I could, and then I imported it into Fusion 360 as an attached canvas. Now you can use that in Fusion 360, you just pop it down in there and then you can calibrate that to the correct size. So all I did was I found the width of the sidewall on the actual machine and that ended up being about 10 millimeters. So I set that width of the sidewall in Fusion 360 as 10 millimeters and it makes the attached canvas um, the size that would be in real life. Then what I did is I did two uh, concentric circles outside of each other by 10 millimeters and then added in a couple splines uh, that just went around each bolt hole. So there were six bolts around the outside. They appeared to be evenly spaced. So what I did then is just did a pattern, a uh, sketch pattern on that spline that I made. Did those in six so they were evenly spaced apart. You get a little bit of uh, perspective shift on your picture that you took. So I relied more on the 10 millimeter concentric circles in Fusion 360 to be equally spaced for the splines. I did not trust the picture at that point. So once I got the splines in, I let the pattern tool adjust for where the splines were gonna be, hoping that they were um, equally spaced apart for each bolt around the hub. And it turns out that they were. So um, after I had that sketch, I didn't do anything else in Fusion 360. All I did was I exported that sketch as a DXF file. Basically a DXF file is just a fancy SVG picture file. So then I tried to export that into the Cricut Design Space application. The problem with the Cricut Design Space is that it's a web-based program. It's kind of on the basis of like Tinkercad, but for 2D design, it's not quite there yet. So when, I, when you export the DXF from Fusion 360, sometimes it has a problem going into the design space for Cricut. So what I found that works actually pretty well is I went through with two or three different programs, um, 2D design uh, CAD programs to try and figure out how I could export that DXF to something like an SVG that's kind of a more common file format so that design space would recognize that and actually put it in a little bit better. What I ended up finding was that um, Inkscape, which is a free photo program, handles that DXF to SVG conversion really well. So what I ended up doing was importing the DXF into Inkscape um, and then just right there I let it keep the proportions because it's not dimensionally accurate the DXF. It just outputs all dimensions, the ratio of the dimensions the same. So the dimensions stay the same, they're just smaller or larger, but proportionally they stay the same. 
So when I put it into Inkscape, what I did then is I just exported out that DXF to an SVG file in Inkscape. So I think it was like Inkscape for SVG or something like that. When that exported, um, it actually imported into Design Space really, really well, exactly how I needed it. So then when I got it into Cricut Design Space, all I did was I set my dimensions up um, appropriately. So I went back into Fusion 360 and I saw what's my widest X axis point. And then when I went back into Design Space, I just set that for the X axis, what size that gasket's supposed to be. So then in Design Space, I had that cut out a, a 164th fiber gasket material that you can pick up from your local hardware store. I used the deep point blade in Cricut. Uh, it's like a 60 degree cut blade angle. And then I just had it do two passes at about 200 and 210 pressure setting, I think, something like that, 220. It really only needed one cut to cut through the fiber material. It was not that thick uh, material. You might want to go up a couple of passes if you go 132nd or 116th, but it worked really, really well. I was actually surprised by the results. It made it up to the hub almost like perfectly. It had maybe like a millimeter off of each uh, actual screw hole that was into the hub, but as far as gasketing, it's absolutely perfect. I couldn't have, I couldn't have asked for any better results. So it saves me some time if I have to replace those brakes in the future. I don't have to deal with that silicone that the uh, previous person put on that just turns into a mess. So I think this is a really good, useful way to utilize the Cricut Maker. And I think it overall, I'm just tickled by how easy it was to take a picture, CAD off of the picture, and then cut it out. It just makes my life 10 times easier because trying to cut them out with scissors whew, those things get hacked up doesn't keep any water out one thing i will point out is that i did cut it on just basic printer paper first to make sure that the gasket was the correct size and made it up to the hub with the screws uh, with the fasteners inside i did that first just to make sure it would work and then i went on to the gasket material but um, i think this is a real useful way of using a cricket maker uh, let me know if there's anything you would have done different or if you would have actually measured it uh, by hand and used some math. I'm not a very good math guy or maths, depending on where you're at. Not a big guy on math. I'll do it, but if I can find a way to not do it, I'll uh, choose that way every time. So hopefully this was entertaining to you. Hopefully you got a little bit of something out of it. If you did, feel free to uh, subscribe. Always like to have more people in the community. Appreciate it. Always like to hear and get different ideas bounced around. Uh, if you'd like the video, maybe give it a like. Maybe, uh, maybe give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, uh, let me know what's up. Let me know why you didn't, and I'll try to improve, because I always like trying to improve these videos. So uh, until the next time, keep your amps up and your filament dry.